Hello everybody, it's Martha and I am here to show you this recap on this page that we did not too long ago uh, for the recap of this lovely page. We were using the birthday dies and a little fan die as a corner. Isn't that just so lovely? I am so appreciative that you are subscribing and I really want to encourage you to ring the bell because with the holidays coming up, I just go off schedule. It, it gets kind of crazy just like everybody else's schedule. So if you ring the bell and I do one of these little recaps or something else going on, I am sure that you will get the message, okay? So here is the recap for the live that we did a couple of weeks back. This is the birthday die that's coming out of Create Nine. You can kind of see that right there. And what we do with the die is we cut it in half and we turn it into a border. Isn't that just fun? And then right here, it's a little fan. So you kind of use them as a little uh, corner instead of a fan, right? So we're just learning how to use our dies differently than what you normally think. I know that if you're a card maker, you have lots of these lovely dies and now you can use them for scrapbooking. You just have to look at your die a little bit different and I promise it will come out just lovely. So let me show you exactly what we did with this class and I will show you exactly what we are doing with this class and also super fun something to do in the back because the backs of our pages are just as pretty as the front. So we kind of just have to get a little creative and you know, we have tons and tons of pictures. So use this back area to put your pictures on it that are going to be a little bit more, uh, you know, your hero pictures in the front and maybe all of the extra pictures of everything else in the back. So uh, let me show you how I did this, okay? Okay, so here is the details. Here are the details on this lovely, super nice page. Okay, so we did the border dies right here. This is one die right here. And we cut it in twice. So you use half of the die for each side. And then this little corner here is the fan. And those become your corner rounders or your corner accents for your page. And then on top of this, I will show you exactly how big this is. <clears throat> And this is a um, one inch gutted page around. And then we have the red that is just a tiny little one eighth of a fillet. And then the front is a one quarter fillet. Okay, so you kind of give it, give it a little bit of interest by making them in different sizes. You can kind of see that right there. So that just kind of makes it fun. I hope you go and see the live to get all the little details on it. And then here you have the die, again, the birthday die here and here. And we have, instead of using it, using it uh, in the tall direction vertical, we kind of made it as we made it into a horizontal area so that now you have two, one bottom and top and you have a big space for a picture in the middle. And when I do these, I kind of always kind of leave my little pocket here open so that I can sneak a picture in here. This would be a perfect round picture in that little spot. I used a Merry Christmas uh, sentiment that is an old sentiment and I added a little bit of black to the back of it so that you kind of get that little shadow effect without it having a shadow. And then lots of little pretty roses, Christmas roses underneath. And a little bow here for me, if you have a bow on a, on a scrapbook page, it just makes it finish. It looks so pretty to have a little extra softness to it. So for me, that is also our little flap here. This little flap is right here, and this comes from our screen dies that is are also our screen die cards. Okay, and then here is the Christmas die that we used also in Create 8. A little tiny journal here and then here. So you can add your date, your journal, whatever you wanna talk about. And I also try to make these little spaces here open so you can sneak a picture into this space right there. You see how fun that is? And then here also, I try to leave that open on this space. So if you wanna put little cards or something in that space, you have that available for you. Then when I open this up, you can see that here I put the Christmas uh, rub-ons just to kind of add some fun embellishment to those corners. We put this down and you kind of see those fun little embellishments. So what I have to show you that is a sneak little something new, something special here 
is what are we going to do with the back of this page, okay? Since I have a little slit on here, I fold this over and you can kind of see my little uh, painter's tape on this spot that I kind of have everything holding down. I want to use this space, but I want to make it different. So I went into my um, non Anna Griffin pages and look for something that is in this blue family like this back here to me looks a little bit more of a blue family here so i went looking for something that would work i love the, the floral here but it just doesn't have any blue in it so i kind of moved that away you know i love a polka dot uh, but that was not going to work for me either and i ended up with two sheets of this lovely paper i do not know what the paper line is uh, but it's just fun to kind of do the contrast. I have blue here, and we will see how we will make that blue work with more blue. So what I did here is I cut off an inch off of each side, and now I have a 10-inch block, okay? And I want to use this in the middle, but to make it even more fun, I would love to make the frame of this in this pretty fun green to make it happy because you know we want some happy stuff going on so let me show you how we're going to do that super easy you can use wet glue or um, I love to use this ATG glue double-sided ATG glue I get it I call it generic ATG but it is um, from tape jungle Okay, so I put this down. I'm only putting glue on this middle section. I leave these pieces up so that I can miter them later, okay? Same thing on this side. And I am putting the green, okay, the green part towards the front, and I have a tiny bit of cream on this side, right there. There we go. And the same thing, you're doing this all the way around. You're leaving the edges out. This barely has any cream, but it's okay. It'll all look just fine. And remember, this is your extra page. This is not the page that is our hero page. It would be so challenging for us to always have a hero page for every single picture that we have. So we want to make something fast and easy and use up our paper that we already have. Okay, so here is our page. Now what I have here, super easy way to just cut this into a, a fun little miter, two tags, and then I'm bringing one, I'm measuring where that little point is, I put my scissors right on it, and then I'm going to estimate right here. You can kind of put a tiny little pencil mark right where you need your scissors to be at if you need that. So we're going to put a tiny little pencil mark right there where you need your scissors at the bottom to be at. And so then you just cut right in. And you can erase your marks. And then when you bring this one down, your miter is just perfect because you only have to cut one of them. And then for this little space, I like to use a little wet glue because I can kind of maneuver this better. Put this one down and then we're going to put this one on top. There we go. Now we have our spaces all nice and mitered. OK, 
okay? You see how fun that is? We just use the exact same paper that we already had from before. There is that piece. And now what I did is I grabbed another one that I just thought was super fun to do. This was another stripe and it is 12 inches. So it goes across the entire paper. And I got another one that is two inches. This is the inches that we took off the bottom of this. I glued them together. And then you want to make the paper pliable and you kind of just curl it up and you curl it down and you curl it up. And this is just softening up and kind of changing the fibers in that paper so it's a little bit more pliable, moldable for you. And then all I have here is I have a little tiny pinch and my finger goes in between and then I get another pinch and my finger goes in between. I do another pinch, okay? Just like that, finger in between and a tiny little pinch, okay? This is just a little bit kind of, of a ruffle, but it's just a little bit easier for you. Finger to hold the space between the two pinches and a pinch, okay? Let's try that again. Finger here, pinch right there, pinch, finger, pinch, finger. You see that? And I am talking about a tiny little amount of pinching there. Okay, so now on this one, this is going to be our space that we are going to be attaching our little pinched area to. So I am putting some heavy duty score tape on this. And remember, again, it's supposed to be fast. It's supposed to be an easy page. And when you start using these, just lose, forget about the perfection part of it and just let it go. Okay, now on this one here, I'm going to do my tape right here. ATG, I'm gonna put it on the top. I don't know how much I need of this yet. I did two strips of one inch by 12. And I put this on the top. Okay, and I am working on a glass mat. So when I use the back, it is also going to remove super easily. But this is old paper, so I'm always super gentle with it. Trying to make sure that we don't rip paper. And you want to have it on both sides. Here we go. Now we've already practiced our pinching, and now when we go back in here to do our pinching, it's super easy. Finger, pinch, finger, pinch, finger, pinch, okay? And now I'm coming back to do my little pinching, and I'm folding down the areas that I pinched just a tiny bit. So when we attach it to our score paper, score tape, it's going to be so easy. You see? So you're making a tiny little zigzag where you pinched it here. There was a finger and you bring it down. Finger and you bring it down. Now you have the fancy folds. The fancy folds are super easy and this is just a quick way of doing your fancy folds. Just like that. And I am hoping that is at least 12 inches. That is what I'm hoping for. So now I'm removing this part and I'm going to attach it here. Okay. Just like that. Because the score tape is the strongest of them. And it just makes it a fun little detail, adding a little fun to the Christmas holidays that sometimes get a little serious when you're scrapbooking. It 
it looks like two inches, two strips of the one inch by 12 is just the right amount for our little strip here that we ended up with. Okay, and here I have a tiny little bit left and I can cut this piece off and fold it in because you know I like things that are finished. And here is our fun little strip. And then this part I'm folding in just like that. Okay, and you know that I love a zigzag or a scallop, and since we're on the fun side, I'm going to make it a zigzag. Maneuver your paper, move it around. Now, you have scissors or you have um, the cutters that make this zigzag way easier than, than just cutting them. I cut them after I have pleated them because then they're all in the right size. And I'm coming in and just taking off a tiny little bit of them. The tiny little edges, because I don't want to take off too much of the size. There we go. You see, I just took off a tiny little bit of it very little. Now this lovely paper that we just did is a frame. And do you see how different it is from this side? But it's the same family. You can still use it. It has that beautiful green that mixes and matches with it. Okay, so here we have this part. And I'm going to eyeball this and we're going to put it down. Okay, this is a one inch that we've removed from the centers, from the edges. We removed one inch from the edges, and now I have this little lovely thing that we can put down right there in the center. And then we have this lovely little belt that we can put, attach it to the sides. And I'm gonna use another little strip just to kind of hold this down. I have a little glue on this side, so I want to use a little bit of this, just a tiny little strip to kind of keep everything nice and clean on this side because maybe you want to put a picture in this, okay? And then I still want to bring some more of the blue. Do you see how that makes it just nice and clean on this side? Nobody's going to see that. Don't worry about it. Now let me show you what I want to bring some of this blue out to the center of this page. And again, I'm trying to remember when to stop. Here is my little trick that we go through on how to make your corner rounders from your beautiful dies. Okay, and I just removed a tiny little piece of it. I put this die down, put my paper on top, okay? And I just want to cut this little piece, so all you do is you kind of back it into that little space. And let me show you with the little corner that I haven't done yet. You lift, the part you wanna cut needs to be under the die, right there. These pieces are just on the top. And then the rest of the paper is just on the top, okay? Let's move that there so we can get the entire piece of paper. You want your die to be completely on the magnet just so it doesn't bend when you run it through the machine. Okay, now here. And then we're gonna run it through our little impress. I run this through, and when I do this, I do not use any metal shims. Let me show you. This is an old magnet that has already had lots of love and I don't have any metal shims. I'm just cutting the very edge corner. So you don't need to have extra shims to make it intricate. You just want this little tiny piece to be cut off, okay? That's all you want. And that was enough for my beautiful mat here. This is what I want left, right there. And then we put this little fun embellishment at the bottom. There we go. Now we're going to put this one down. 
Now, yes, you can see on this mat, if you look really good, <clears throat> now, you can see on this mat, if you look really good, the impression of the dye, the dye on the edges, because you can see that ran through, but nobody's gonna see that, excuse me. You're gonna have pictures on top of this mat. That's what we use it for, okay? This is the spot where you're gonna put more pictures on here, okay? And here is our die from this side. So the little belt that I wanna put on here is just going to be, I think like, so we can see all four corners here, right above that little space. Now you can also do it standing up vertical. That would be super fun also. You decide where you want that to be at. And for me also, I sometimes like to make these little belts with a little pop-up dot because then you can really sneak your little pictures into this space super easy. I think it needs two little pop-up dots. I love these nice big ones that come with all our cards and everything. Here you go, super easy scrapbooking 101, I think. Okay, you're just learning more tricks and trends and trying to find ways to, to improve your scrapbooking. Here is, okay, so I want the end of my little die here to sit just like that. Okay, now we have this fun little spot there. Oh, I love that one. You see, sometimes you just need a little something, something to add to your to your little page. And I think that is it. This is my simple page. Again, let's remember that. This is my simple page. So if we just add something right there to that little edge, that's all we need. And again, I'm going to use a little bit of the little score tape right here because I'm not taking the sticker off of my backing. There we go. We're not taking the sticker off because I want it to be able to sneak pictures in and out. So I'm just adding that right there. I love the vertical way that sits and we have a little embellishment. So here is the page for the back. You learned how to make these fun little corners for your dies. So look at your dies a little bit better. Look and see what you can do. And then remember this one. This one was our hero page. And here we have this fabulous page that has all of this fabulous opulence, right? But now let's get this in the page protector. Another lovely thing to do. Let's show you. If I put something white behind this, I can show you better. Okay, on this, I added rub-ons. Do you see that? I added pretty fun rub-ons right in that space. And even a outside of the page protector, some stickers. Okay, now, when we put this in, when you have a, you wanna put this in your page protector and you have lots of embellishments on both sides, cover your page with two pages, just like this. They're nice and flat and blank and you're going to slide it into your page protector, just like a nice big sandwich, just like that. And then you slowly squeeze this in because you have nice embellishments on both sides and you don't want to pull it out, okay? Now you can really see where I did my, here we go. Now you can see where I put these gorgeous rub-ons for Christmas and the stickers on the outside of the page. And then we can take out our extra paper so you can expose your loveliness just like that, okay? Now what I did is I cut this part out. You've seen me do that lots of times before. I use a um, paper a fat ruler like this. This is a Martha Stewart quilting ruler, I believe. And I put this right in here. 
and with my X-Acto knife, I cut right where I want the part that's gonna open. Now you can, <clears throat> now you can have access. You see right here, I cut that part out on both sides. And now we have access to the inside of this lovely paper through the page protector because you made a little flap from your page protector. There we go. Now we have this one. And on the back side, you have this loveliness. Once you have your pictures, you don't have to have access to this area. Okay, but now you have this one and you have this one and you have two pages from all of this loveliness that you did. So it's really fun to do. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I really appreciate you subscribing, leaving me a thumbs up, ring the notification bell because we want to meet you and see you. Uh, join me at the Martha's Paper Crafting group and we do crops there so that we can see each other through the Facebook rooms. Please come over and join me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye.